Welcome back to another high yield video question bank. This particular question today, which is going to be number 45 in the series, is my take on an incredibly high yield question that shows up all the time on step one and step two, level one and level two. So of all the videos I've made, I feel that this is a really important one for you to understand the concept behind. So let's dive right in. A nine-year-old girl is brought to the pediatrician by her mother due to concerns about her behavior. The mother reports that the child frequently complains of abdominal pain, nausea, and excessive urination, especially in the mornings before school. She also notes that the child has become increasingly withdrawn and avoids social interaction with peers. Physical exam is unremarkable, and laboratory studies, including complete blood count and comprehensive metabolic panel, are within normal limits. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A, child abuse, B, type one diabetes mellitus, C, generalized anxiety disorder, D, normal childhood behavior, or E, nocturnal enuresis. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this. I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. The correct answer to this practice question is answer choice C, generalized anxiety disorder. Before I go through and explain how you should be thinking about such a high yield question, let's first just touch on generalized anxiety disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder refers to excessive worry and intolerance of uncertainty about a variety of events or activities. And generally there's no specific stressor or no specific trigger, and the timeline is greater than six months. It's often accompanied by physical symptoms, which can include abdominal pain or dizziness. Children in particular, might experience somatic complaints as a manifestation of their anxiety, and the symptoms worsen in anticipation of stressful situations, for example, as this question points out, going to school. Now let's come back to the question, and what I want to draw your attention to is that abdominal pain, nausea, excessive urination, and being increasingly withdrawn and avoiding social interactions with peers are vague physical symptoms that can be associated with any of the first three answer choices. So what I've bolded in the vignette will not tell you whether you're dealing with child abuse, type one diabetes mellitus, or generalized anxiety disorder. What you need to do is look through the remainder of the vignette and pull out pieces of information that push you in one direction or rule out certain answer choices. So what we see here is that in blue, the fact that the physical exam is unremarkable effectively rules out child abuse. For the purposes of USMLE and Comlex, if the test writer wants you to pick child abuse, there are, unfortunately, a host of physical symptoms that they could give you because the physical manifestations of child abuse are really where the test writer is probably going to go. And so those symptoms would be unexplained injuries, especially if it's in somebody who's not yet walking. So if it's like an infant who only knows how to crawl, or perhaps the infant isn't even crawling yet, you don't expect to see lots of injuries. If there are injuries on the torso, the neck, the ears, the buttocks, these are considered, you know, quote, red flag areas. And so bruising or injuries there would raise your suspicion for child abuse. Injuries or fractures that are in different stages of healing. It's kind of a buzzword that's associated with child abuse. So, you know, the implication being that the abuser inflicted an injury and then say like a week and a half later inflicted another injury. And so you've got these different injuries that are in various stages of healing because of the temporal nature of the child abuse. Um, some other really high yield physical findings that can be associated with it are subdural hematomas, and retinal hemorrhages, and oftentimes the test writer will show you pictures of this. So if you see a picture of retinal hemorrhage in the eye, or you see a CT scan as part of a workup that reveals subdural hematoma, you really need to be thinking, okay, perhaps I'm, I'm unfortunately dealing with child abuse here. And then lastly, uh, inconsistent histories by caregivers, that does show up on exams a lot. And then of course, there's some really obvious red flags, which are, are a little less likely to show up on your exam because they're so obvious, but burns, bites, injuries that are in the uh, general shape of an object, like a belt, things like that would all push you in the direction of choice A. So while, again, the physical symptoms that I gave you in the vignette could be the physical and behavioral manifestations or sequelae of child abuse, 
the fact that I told you that the physical exam is unremarkable effectively rules that out if you're taking an exam. Choice B, type 1 diabetes mellitus, is effectively ruled out by my telling you that the lab studies, the CBC, the CMP are all normal. Now to be clear, just like with child abuse, the physical symptoms that I bolded could be associated with DKA or type 1 diabetes mellitus. But the fact that the labs are normal rules it out because you would be given things on your exam like hyperglycemia, like the presence of ketones, like the fruity acetone breath that people often have, but that all is negative. So in this question thus far, you've been able to eliminate answer choice A because there's no buzzwords or physical evidence of child abuse. You've been able to eliminate choice B because all of the labs are normal and there's no buzzwords that are historically associated with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. It's not normal childhood behavior and there's absolutely no evidence that we're dealing with nocturnal enuresis. And so even if you don't know anything about generalized anxiety disorder, simply by the process of elimination, we can conclude that the correct answer is choice C. So the purpose of me giving you this practice question, really there are two reasons. One, I want you to be mentally prepared to have to differentiate child abuse versus actual disease processes because child abuse can present very similarly to true organic disease and you have to be able to make that differentiation. And then part two, I want you to understand that in at least one question on your exam, typically having to do with either pediatrics or psychiatry, you're going to get an answer choice of normal childhood behavior. And that's going to be the correct answer in probably one question. So in, in addition to being able to differentiate child abuse versus true disease or true psychiatric disorders, also understand that at some point you're going to have to identify this is simply normal childhood behavior, and this is just a kid growing up. So this is a famous test question, shows up a lot, step one and step two, because this is pretty clinical. So be prepared to tackle this topic. Good luck.